Hi and welcome to another Just Ask Jen video. I'm designer Jen Gallagher and these videos are hosted by Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. Today I'm answering the question of how do we include our social media outlets in our scrapbooking. To answer that question I'm using the Spicy Social Soup from Jilly Bean Soup who is generously sponsoring this video. The collection includes some fun embellishments including these Spicy Social Soup flashcards which includes definitions and fun phrases. Peapod, peapod parts, which are die cut shapes in an ephemera pack, a stamp set with popular icons, double sided pattern paper, and this pattern paper has a cream almost craft background and includes light, lots of icons and images that are popular today. The colors are rich and will match nearly any color scheme that you want to work with. In addition to these, I requested some fun embellishments that I noticed at the CHA event, including wood sprinkles, which look like wooden buttons with fun gem or enamel dots inside, and the wooden nickels, which are fun wooden buttons and coordinate with the spicy social soup. So we're going to make a layout today that incorporates some of our social media threads and posts using this fun collection from Jilly Bean Soup. So I'm starting with a sheet of this pattern paper that has blue envelopes on one side and icons on the other. And at the top of the layout, I have three journaling cards that I've cut out. And one of them I've already journaled on with a black pen. And we just wanna make sure that these are nice and centered. I'm gonna use an adhesive dot runner to do that. And then we'll adhere the other ones as well. And I'm going to build a grid layout from these journaling cards. So to the center of the pie chart, I'm going to take one of those wooden nickels. And what I did is I added twine to the center of it. And to do that, you take one of the wooden nickels and you simply peel back the foam adhesive and it will reveal the holes in the button. And then from there, you can add twine, or you can leave the foam on and use them as a sticker. Once you have taken off the adhesive, you then have to add additional adhesive back. So I'm just going to add a glue dot back to the back of it. Then to the status update, I'm going to add some of these fun die cut shapes and we will add the woman and the man. Just layer some of these on top of the card. Side by side one another. And then on top of that, we'll add this fun little word bubble. There's a few in the ephemera pack and they actually have little conversations. This one says, I miss you, let's chat soon. And then the little heart, I want to pop it up a little bit, so I'm going to add an adhesive foam square behind it. We'll put it on the girl to bring in some of that blue. To the Insta Love, I'm going to add a photo. And this is a photo of my son on the computer. This is about his new discovery of social media and email and all of that good stuff. Now for the rest of the grid, I've cut out some of the rest of the pattern papers. This one has the months on one side and then this fun number on the other. We'll place it right below, leaving a slight gap between the two. Then to the journaling, which I have pre-printed on craft cardstock, and you can see that it runs the entire length, I want to do some stamping. So to stamp, I'm going to take a foam core base that gives me a nice firm area to stamp in. You will need an acrylic block and the stamp set. Now you can see I pre-plan my journaling so there's a little bit of a gap in the actual journaling. From there I'm going to take some of these fun stamps. The first one I'm going to use says hashtag love this. And then a good stamp color for a craft is crumb cake from Stampin' Up. It's kind of a darker brown color but it almost gives a tone on tone. You could also use a Versamark and I'm going to stamp right in the middle of the journaling. So we're bringing in some of the social media aspects of things by using this fun stamp set. Once the stamping has dried, you can add it to your project. Again, this is going to go right down the center of this grid. To the top, I'm going to add the good life. So run across 
the top and I have very carefully planned where elements will go so that everything will fit. To the bottom I'm using the world icon and the Instagram icon. Make sure that the Instagram camera flash is facing the right direction. To the center grid I'm going to take the pie chart pattern paper. It does have people on the back. We're going to place it below the blue status update journaling block. Again, just creating a grid layout. Then I like the look of washi tape or pendant banners, so I've taken two pieces of pattern paper. One is this red one from the other side of the pie charts, and we're going to cut the end into a triangle shape. And then one is from the orange pattern paper that has these little circle dots and has triangles on one side. And again, cutting a triangle from the end. And I'm going to start by just adhering the tops of these. And I'll show you why I'm doing that. I want to add a little bit of twine down the middle of this. So I'm going to take some crochet twine that I've pre-cut. You could use baker's twine or ribbon. Make sure it's attached fairly well. And then I'll simply thread it around those pennant shapes several times. Usually do three or four times and then I tie it in a knot or a bow. It gives it just a little bit of thickness and sometimes how many times I go around the paper will depend on the thickness of the twine or trim that I'm using. I'll tie that off and then I'm going to adhere that a little bit better in a bow again if it comes undone. You can add a little bit of glossy accents right to the center of that bow and it will stay permanently. That's a trick I learned from Jennifer McGuire. And then we can attach this bottom section and adjust as needed. You can even curl up the bottoms if you want just by rolling them up with your finger. I want to do some additional stamping, so I'm going to bring back my stamp block. And this time, because so many of the objects on here fall on cream pattern paper, I'm going to stamp into cream pattern paper. And I'm going to use the Hello Circle Stamp. And I'm going to start with Garden Green from Stampin' Up. I simply picked colors that were similar. Just make sure you evenly ink up the stamp and press firmly into the block gives you a nice image, nice crisp image. This particular cardstock is fairly flat. Then I'm going to stamp another image. This time I am going to use the like symbol on the stamp set and I'm going to use a green in a slightly different tone. This is a pear pizzazz, again from Stampin' Up, just picking colors that I felt like matched the collection. And then one thing that is fun is when you have a company that uses basic shapes like circles or squares, I always look to see if I have a tool that can help me cut out the images. So I'm going to use a circle punch and I'm going to center the stamped image right in the middle and then I'm going to punch it out. That way I don't have to fussy cut it. So I have several different sizes of circle punches and I'm making that tool do all the work for me. So there's a lighter green and there's a darker green. If you don't like this mottled look, you can pre-treat your stamps by rubbing them with some an eraser and that will kind of pre-treat the stamp. I've also found after I've used the stamp for a while, then it starts to darken up a little bit. I'm gonna add some adhesive foam dots behind these circles so they stand out a little bit more on my page. And they look just like a die cut element, but because they're stamps, I can use them a million different ways just by changing the color. You could even do things like embossing ink or powder. It's up to you. The final block is this kind of computer grid with additional icons on the back. We're going to use the blue side since I already have so much going on on the layout. And then I've taken a few things. First is a Foam die cut. This is from that ephemera pack. 
We'll layer that on first. The next is this Hello My Name Is name tag. Layer that next. On top of that is one of the definition cards. It says status. Layer that on top of there. To the top of that, I'm going to add a couple of small, very tiny little paper clips. You could use regular sized. When I add paper clips, I usually try and do one side on the small side of the paper clip and one side on the large. Then again, one of these fun word bubbles that says this really happened. I'm going to pop dot this one so I get some good layers. And this will go across the top of that status update definition to bring some of that blue into the bottom. So you can see this fun little cluster. Then because I have a bunch of circle elements going on, I'm going to use these fun embellishments that I showed you at the beginning of the video. You simply remove the adhesive protection and then you can just add them. If you move quickly, you can change how they look. I have a lime green one or a leafy green one as well. And you can move them around until you get the feel that you want. So there you have a layout that shows how you can include status updates and other things from social media in a layout. What makes this layout so fun is that it actually uses icons and pattern papers that mimic social media icons. So look for this social soup from Jilly Bean Soup. Thank you for joining me for today's Just Ask Jen video. Be sure to subscribe to the Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine YouTube channel so you don't miss out on these monthly videos.